Let's talk a little bit more about Saracens because obviously they're back and you mentioned if they have all their superstars back, they'll be one of the top three big teams. What needs to go right for them? Oh. I think the big, yeah, I mean, uh, the big thing for them is when you look at them on paper, they've got an unbelievable squad. But it's actually when you look into the detail of how much those boys can play, you're talking about Marrow, you're talking about Mako, Faz, you know, Elliot Daly, um, the guys that were on that British and Irish Lions tour. Um, and then you factor in how much international rugby there is this year as well. There's the three autumn internationals where the premiership games, there's premiership games over those some of those weekends. There's the Six Nations. And it's an extended season again because it's it's there's 13 teams in the Prem this year. But it's how quickly those guys can flip between international rugby and club rugby. And all they'll need to be is in contention come sort of April time, March, April time, back end of the season. So it's they're going to win games. They're a quality outfit. Where they've got Manu Vunapola at 10. Alex Goode's come back um, from, from Japan. He won't be playing international rugby. So Alex Lozowski's coming back from France. You know, he, there's quality players to keep the, that club in the round, the top four, while all the international boys are away. I think their squad depth will get tested. You know, Earl was a phenomenon last year for Bristol, as was Malins. Yeah, so you reel off some of these names and you've not even really mentioned Itoji and Faz and the rest of them. It's a world-class squad, isn't it? Andrew, I don't know if they're a world-class squad. Look at really, me. Really, James? Well, it's, I think they're an ageing squad now. Really. So when I look at it and I think about what's happened to the club, the fact that they've lost big Willie, little Willie Skelton, who I think is one of the best players in the world. They've got Swinnow, got, mate. Swinnow's there, mate. Very true. He was unbelievable in the championship, is all I'm saying. <laughs> um, he was fair play to him. Uh, but you've got Alex Good. He's obviously been in Japan. He's not, I wouldn't say he's in his prime anymore. There's talk about Mako Vunapola leaving. If Mako leaves, then I imagine Billy leaves as a package. Whether or not that's this season or next season, we could talk about the rumours around that. Obviously, the form that Faz has been in, you know, we don't have a Richard Wigglesworth. And you, and you think about it, it's been, obviously, as we know, a year that they've been in the championship. Michael Rhodes has retired um, as well. Um, the guys that are coming back that we're talking about, Ben Earl, Nick Azikwe, I'm looking at some of the names here, Nick, Nick Tompkins, who did okay at the Dragons, but hasn't really kicked on, like British Jamie Lion. George. You, you said he'd be a British Lion, didn't you? Oh, a British and Irish Lion, but yeah, it's um, <laughs> I was wrong. and that, I was wrong, but I'm looking at it now. I want Saracens to be good. I think they can make the top four, but when you actually delve deeper into their team, and everything that they've been through. I think the only saving grace maybe this year is that they're not in Europe um, in terms of the, the Champions Cup. So Saracens are an interesting one because people like you've just said there, you, you see them as in the, in the top three. I want to see them in the top three and obviously the top four, but it, it being in one of them top three or four teams in the league. But I just look at the profile of the team and I'm thinking, actually, they could be in transition here over the next two or three years. And a lot of that will depend on what Mako and Belly decide to do. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. you, what kind of form is Faz going to be in off the back of, which without speaking for him, only going on base of what we can see, probably the hardest time of his career in terms of his form and, and the pressure and, and the spotlight that's on him. So, you know, you're hoping that Max Malian is the way that he played at Bristol, albeit he's been injured. Um, I don't know whether he's going to be fit for the start of the season. Obviously, Ben Earl was brilliant as well. But whether there's a change of guard in terms of, the likes of Quinns. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. And uh, and Bristol, you know, an extra extra maybe evolving on from last season. So I'm I'm quite looking forward to watching it, Andrew, because I love my ruggers. Do you want to talk more about Mecco and Billy and the rumours around that and where they might be going and what your thoughts are? Post World Cup, he's gone. He's gone to the highest bidder, isn't he? And they'll go. They'll I could go. see, yeah, I could see him and Billy going to Clermont. For like a ridiculous deal, like a like a, a double whammy, like a duo. Yeah. So I, I don't think they'll leave pre World Cup. You know the the way the laws are written around eligibility for England. Um, I think they've. You know, we're two years away from a World Cup now, so I think they'll both stay at Saracens for the next two years, and then they'll cash in as big a deal as they can as a collective in France somewhere where the rugby probably suits them as well, um, and that there's there's mega money still to have there. Can I see him going to Japan? Well, I mean, it's all about money, then, isn't it? And coming from me, who, you know, I could put my hands in the air, I was trying to take as big a deal as possible towards the back end of your career because you don't know how many contracts you've got left. And no one should begrudge them for, for looking outside of Saracens. Um, 
you know, a, every player should be doing the best for them and making the best decision for them and their family at the time. And, um, you know, I, I see them both finishing the next two years at Saracens, going to a World Cup. You know, England have still, you know, got aspirations to win that and they're part of that uh, that group at the minute, whether Eddie makes big changes or not. Um, and then I see them cashing in, unless an offer comes in beforehand that they can't resist. Well, let's get some clarity then, because, Gertie, you chucked out a few teams of who you thought was going to be in top four. Let's get your top four um, from both of you on uh, who's going to finish in the semi-finals this year. All right, Andrew, I'll go first. Oh, I've got to be decisive in my picks, haven't I? Yeah. And I think I nailed it last year. Let's just say that I did. I got top four. I don't know if Exeter are going to make top four. God, there's a headline there. Really? Um, I'm going to go Sale. Yeah. Leicester. Oh. Harlequins. Really? And, Sar- and Saracens. Maybe not in that really? order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. So no, Brist- no Bristol. Oh gosh! No Exeter. You've just—I mean, you've got—you've been decisive. You've not put Bristol or Exeter in there. That's decisive. I mean, stick with it, Jim. Yeah, headline: Bristol and Exeter. Jim Hamilton, rugby expert, has said that <laughs> Bristol and Exeter won't make the top four. I put my name to it. Let's see how it unfolds. This is part yeah. of the discussion, isn't it? I don't know. It I think is. Exeter might struggle because of the way that they play, especially in the start of it, with the with the new laws around the pick and go. Um, they've not signed many players. They were no, kind of on the on the downward trajectory at the end of last season. I don't know. Not I love extra what they stand for, but not I'm putting my, I'm putting myself out there. I think Sale because half the team South African and I love about Alex Anderson. Leicester, I think, and now on the upward curve, Genji, the the baby rhino is obviously captain. Skips Freddie Burns, friend of the show, is now there. Jasper Visa, they've got a South African contingent. Uh, Saracens, I think they have got the quality amongst the squad to scrape into the top four. And Harlequins, because they're <laughs> we're a champion team, you know? So, Be, Jim, I, you're I know, the same I, way, I, are you? I know, but look, I think I don't think it's as clear-cut in, in terms of the three best teams that you mentioned earlier. So they are my top four. Uh, but what watch out <laughs> I can't remember saying this. Watch out for Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> out of all the teams, if you say who's been yeah. busy in, in pre-season, it's the old Worcesters, the old Warriors. Now, I can't see yeah. it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll eat, I'll eat my boots. I'll eat my Timberland boots if they finish in the top six. But in terms of players that they've signed, Duan van der Merwe, obviously Rory Sutherland, two British and Irish Lions, Willie Hines, Owen Williams. I mean, Owen Williams is a big one, I think. Owen Williams is a big one for him because he's, if he's fit, he's class. Mate, all I know is you've said if Worcester get in the top six, you'll eat your Timberland boots. And that was a fact <laughs> that you stated on this podcast. So I will hold you to that, James. I'd I'm sure you will, Andrew. So, I'm sure you will. I'd lo- I would love Worcester to get into the top six. Um, for me, I'm going the Bristol Bearbacks. A uh, lot of pain from losing that semi-final last year. Extra Chiefs, not in any order this. This is just a top four in any order. Saracens. And? Really close between Sale and Leicester. Um, I'm going to go Leicester because it's my old oh, club. Oh, 